Hello State Station Nation, it is 2021. That means somehow men's volleyball is ready to get going here in year number two. Head coach Luke Bentley is here with us to talk about the season. Coach, how are you doing today? Good, thanks for having me. Of course, so talk a little bit about the end of last year, a little bit of a short recap about last season. Got those first couple wins, the first points, etc. Then unfortunately, COVID did strike into your season a little early, but you did get a majority of it done. So how did that impact the guys and how did you think the first season went overall? Yeah, uh, like you, what you said, you know, we had a lot of firsts out of the way. Um, good year overall. Disappointed that we, of course, had to end short, you know, and, and be stopped uh, short of what our season would have been. Um, but overall, it was a good year, and the guys were excited about how we finished. We ended up winning four out of our last five matches. So uh, we can't complain too much. The big thing we've talked about is just kind of picking up where we left off and, and going from there. Um, but like what you said, you know, it, it is what it is. So frustrated, disappointed, um, but at the end of the day, everyone was in the same boat. So, uh, you know, we let it go and moved on and, you know, got ready for, for this year. Then go into this summer then a little bit about recruiting and how you kept in touch with the guys over the summer, made sure that they were staying in shape. And even though it's a winter-ish sport, sure. someone wanted to make sure that they were getting their reps in over the summer at home. Yeah, uh, we were fortunate that most of our recruiting was finished by the point uh, of COVID uh, that it had started at least. Um, so we added a couple more guys after the fact, uh, a couple transfers. And then from there, you know, the guys were able to work out and do what they could as much as they could. You know, a lot of places were closed, a lot of areas, you know, they weren't able to get in gyms and do stuff. But um, so they did enough over the summer. They tried to stay in shape. And then we do a summer reading book every year uh, where the guys are reading the same book and we talk about that. And so um, some Zoom calls here and there and, and with group chats and things like that. And so it was, it was pretty standard for the most part. You know, we don't see the, the players over the summer normally. Um, so besides that, you know, we were able to keep in touch and, and do what we could. And then they came back ready to go in August. So. Then talk a little bit about before we get to the players you added in a new ga this year and you also bring back a familiar face for round two as a men's assistant so what about the coaching staff did you add in for this upcoming year yeah so uh going off of the returner uh steven satz who's a former statesman himself and a former graduate assistant here in the athletic department uh he's going to return as our volunteer assistant uh, so we're really excited about having him back. He actually is a new father and uh, has a young one. So maybe you'll see him with a little guy uh, as well. But uh, and then our full-time graduate assistant, Jordan Rosenberg, uh, comes uh, by way of uh, UW Parkside. Uh, he's from Northern Illinois and uh, he's done a great job so far. He brings you know good energy and uh, a lot of fresh ideas and a fresh face to the program. And we're really excited about having him. He's done a really great job so far. So. Uh, yeah, all is good on that end. Um, we're, we're excited to get playing this year. Then let's focus on the guys who will be playing this year. You've got new faces, a lot of the people from last year. So go around the horn a little bit, however you see fit. And who's the Statesman team here for 2021? Yeah, so like you said, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, we returned most of the guys that uh, people would have seen on the court last year. So to give you an idea, uh, we'll start on the outside. So we return Ike Papes and CJ Reddick, who are the two guys that started most of the year. Uh, we also return Michael Cox and then Luke Schubel. Luke was unfortunately uh, ineligible last year, but he's a familiar face. And then we added two new guys on the outside, both from Texas, both freshmen, uh, Nick Perez and George Araneta. Um, so that kind of rounds out the outside. So once again, familiar faces for the most part. Uh, going into the middle, uh, we have Sean Mason and Eli Hero, both guys that were in the middle last year. Um, and then we added two new middles as well. Uh, Charlie Figgy, who's a bigger guy uh, from Appleton, Wisconsin as a freshman. And then Harrison Paul, another freshman from uh, Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Uh, moving to the right side, uh, we actually have a lot of new faces over there. Uh, we end up moving one of our guys that I'll say here in a second, but uh, the new guys are Anthony Torres, a uh, freshman from the Chicago area. Um, Johnny Joel Jackson, a junior from Texas, uh, transfer. Uh, and then we added uh, uh, two guys this semester, uh, two new guys. One is a freshman from Brazil, his name is Leonardo Manetto, and he can play the right side and in the middle. And then our last one is Caleb Seguin, who's a transfer junior uh, out of Canada. And uh, so that'll be a really good competition for all those guys on the right side. Um, Going to Libero, I talked about someone moving. We end up transitioning Carlos Garcia from right side to Libero. Uh, and then he'll be added with uh, Victor Jerez, who's a junior transfer from Warner University in Florida. So those will be our two DS Libero guys. And then our setter position is similar to last year. We return Connor Muff 
and Matt Helmick, uh, both juniors and sophomores respectively. And then our new guy is Francisco Cruz, who's a freshman uh, setter out of Puerto Rico. So I think that rounds out everyone. If I didn't miss anyone, I apologize, but definitely a lot of new faces. And how has that interaction been between the new guys and the old guys? Obviously, first year guys, they were there all last year, got in jail. This is the first time they're seeing new people come into the program. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's gone as well as we could have hoped. Um, you know, it's an interesting mix when you bring in a first year team and just that first class, they're kind of on their own, they're used to that. So when you bring in a second year class, um, like, oh my God, there's new guys, you know, and kind of having the interaction. So um, they, the older guys done a great job welcoming the younger guys. Uh, things have gone over as well as, like I said, we could have hoped. And uh, yeah, really no issues so far. So we're very lucky and blessed to have the group we have and uh, we're really excited to, you know, get going this year. Speaking of getting going, it's going to be a little bit of a tough going in this conference. Not only does it have the preseason number one, it's got a couple other top five. So what are the rest of the teams looking like here in the old Heart of America conference? Yeah, uh, so to give everyone kind of an idea, to keep you up to speed here, uh, catch you up to speed here would be uh, Park University joined the Heart of America for every sport, uh, and that includes men's volleyball. So they do have a men's volleyball program, and uh, they won a national championship a couple years ago, and uh, they, I think, come in at number four in the country, um, maybe even three in the country this year. Uh, so they're in our conference, so that's another tough one. And then we added in two other schools that are affiliate members, uh, which means that they're just here for men's volleyball, and they're not a part of the rest of the sports. But um, the first one is Missouri Baptist University. I think they come in at four or five in the country. So like you said, three top five teams in the country for preseason polls, uh, and they're just here for men's volleyball. And then the, the last one is, I think I'm saying this right, University of Health Sciences and Pharmacy in St. Louis, mm -hmm. um, formerly known as St. Louis College of Pharmacy. Uh, they join as well. Um, and so that puts 10 teams in our conference, uh, which is great, an even number, you know, um, uh, probably the largest conference in the NAI for men's volleyball. So it's uh, a lot of positives to it, but the negatives, what you just said, are <laughs> three teams in the top five. And uh, for a second year program, uh, we have our hands full. So, uh, but it, it's, it's okay. A lot of championship banners in those top three. Or yeah, five. all three of those universities um, have won uh, a national championship in the last six years. You know, so uh, it's, uh, it's not getting easier for us. <laughs> and how do the guys feel about taking on these top end teams? It certainly would probably be a little daunting, but at the same time to say, you got to beat good teams to become a good team. Yeah, uh, we know what we're getting ourselves into. You know, the guys understand it. Uh, we played Grandview twice last year. They were number one most of the year. Um, you know, we obviously talk about it in recruiting. Uh, they know exactly how tough it is. And they're, I mean, first of all, we can't change it, right? <laughs> but they're totally okay with it. Um, they embrace it, like you said. You know, we know we have to beat those teams to get to where we want. And uh, that's just far, part of the first step, you know. So it is a little scary to think about. And, uh, you know, we try to not have the, the whole, uh, you know, feel sorry for us mentality. Um, but I, I'd be hard pressed to find a better conference for another sport in the heart of America. You know, I, I think men's volleyball might be the toughest out of all the sports. and. Uh, it is what it is, you know, it's a good thing to have and we're excited to uh, be a part of it. Then let's talk about who they are going to play. Obviously schedule starting the 19th, which is, we're recording this on Friday, so that will be Tuesday for all you keep your score at home. Yep. Uh, who will play first and then some highlights for the rest of the campaign. Yeah, so we open up here uh, in the pack at William Penn against Culver Stockton, so a conference opponent off the bat. Um, and like we talked about with the, the more teams, the bigger schedule, it makes it a little harder to schedule non-conference. Uh, we have less non-conference matches. And so uh, it's a full, you know, two matches a piece for everyone, home and away for everyone at conference. So it's 18 total conference matches, which is a lot. Uh, but anyway, like I said, next week we go Tuesday here, and then we go to Grandview on Thursday uh, for the number one team in the country at their place. Uh, so yeah, we open up with a bang for the most part. Um, and then from there, you know, without, you know, through the conference opponents, but also we have a couple of non-conference ones that'll be good. Uh, Jamestown comes to, to town. They're number eighth in the country right now. Uh, we played them twice last year, and they're a really good program. Uh, that'll be competition as well. And then a couple other ones are, we go to the university, no, I'm sorry, Cumberland University, which is outside of Nashville. Uh, a couple matches down there for a try. And then we go to St. Xavier University in Chicago for a couple of matches for a try at the end of March. Um, so non-conference will be tough as well, including conference. Um, but once again, I mean, it is what it is, right? That's, that's kind of the reality that we're facing. And so um, we're excited about it. But yeah, uh, who knows what will happen this year? Obviously, COVID's still uh, among us. So we're just excited to get going and see what we can do. And um, playing volleyball is the goal. Yeah, despite schedule restrictions right. on how many games and all that, you get a full slate, and that probably makes the guys pretty happy. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So 
then what are your goals for this team? Obviously, year two, you want to take a step up from just checking off first win, first points, blah, 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 blah. So what are you looking for out of this team? Not only from the big perspective, but a little more from the micros perspective for this season. Yeah, I think for us, we, we really feel like we've improved from last year, um, both on the court and off the court, uh, which is a great thing to, to be able to say. Um, but at the same time, we want to see improvement. You know, we want to be able to see um, maybe some of those wins go up, you know, as far as numbers of, number of wins. Um, we want to see our level of competition improve. Um, all the stuff that you would normally see in the maturation process and the growth process of, of a program, um, we feel like we can compete with everyone this year. Uh, not that we didn't compete with people last year, but there were for sure some times that it was a little lopsided. Um, and we, we don't feel that way so much this year. So we know we can be competitive. We look to uh, you know improve our record, improve our place in conference. Um, I think we have a very good chance at uh, and make it a conference tournament, which includes the top six teams, and uh, kind of going from there. But we just know we have to compete every day and work hard and, and get to where we want to get. So um, it won't be easy, but uh, yeah, we feel pretty good about the group we have this year. And how do they feel getting ready to play at home again? They're excited. Uh, if anyone's seen a match in the pack, you know, between our lights and our sound system and the fans and the atmosphere is incredible. You know, we're really excited about playing again in front of our home crowd. Uh, we couldn't be more excited about uh, you know, being able to play in, what, five days, four days, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're, they're really excited. They can't wait. And uh, like I said, more than anything, they're just excited to play volleyball again, you know, and be able to, to do all that stuff. So uh, it should be fun. So I encourage everyone to come out on Tuesday uh, at 7 o'clock here in the pack and watch us take on Culver Stockton. And it uh, should be a, a fun group to watch. It, it'll be a little bit different last year. We improved in a few areas. We, you know, got a little bit bigger, a little stronger. Um, but it's, it should be some fun volleyball to see. That's right. So get your tickets now, folks. StatesmanAthletics.com for that. Check the schedule as it keeps updated as the season goes along. Make sure you get those tickets, though. Packed PAC, Patton Activity Center, is a great place to watch volleyball. You want to see them play this year. Coach, thanks for stopping in, and we'll see you again Tuesday night. Great. Thanks for having me.